Good evening, everyone. It is close to Christmas. It's December the 12th. And I'd like to say, go ahead and say Merry Christmas to you. Our Savior is born, was born, and um, He is forevermore in heaven with His Father at this present moment. And so we would like to say Merry Christmas to you. We're going to just have an average Christmas uh, this time, me and my wife and and, and some family, of course, and so um, we've had bigger Christmases and all of that. Whatever we come up with during this time, it is the birth of Christ that we celebrate. So remember that in the hustle and bustle, and we like to have nice things given and um, get good, good gifts and all and good prices and stuff like that. But let's remember that our Savior was born we're going to look at that one of the main verses, uh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 11. So Merry Christmas to you, uh, 2021. I'm excited about what the Lord uh, has for us now and the next year coming up. So let's just rejoice in the Lord. Um, I thought I'd do a little something a little different. We're going to do the Christmas story. And actually, I'm just going to read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2, verses one through 20. And so uh, we'll do that. And with that in mind, I want to share some verses, some verses that lead up to the story and explain some different characters that we're going to meet. Now, what we will not do is we will not look at Matthew chapter 2, which brings the wise men in, okay? We're just going to look at the shepherds from Luke chapter 2, and uh, we'll uh, mention a little bit about the shepherds, but there's one thing that we do re need to remember. I remember as a child growing up and all through the years that we always put the shepherds and the, and the wise men coming together at the same time there in the inn at the crib of the Christ's birth. Actually, we put it together in programs and, and uh, our Christmas programs, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And, um, but actually, the shepherds saw Christ in Mary and Joseph, as we'll read in Luke 2. And actually, Matthew 2 gives later on that the wise men would come. Now, surprisingly, whether you know this or not, when the wise men came, Christ was somewhere or another between the ages of a year and a half to two years of age at the time. And we see that when it says that the star came and stood over the house where the young child. It's not the babe in, in the, in the, in, wrapped in swaddling clothes. It's later on. But we put them together and that's fine. But we do need to make that distinction, distinction in our minds on the on that story when we when we read the two together and put them all together and that's great. Okay, let's go ahead and go to Isaiah chapter number seven first. Isaiah chapter number seven, and we're going to read verses seven fourteen, and this is the scripture where Israel was given a sign. Now, they've been given many signs, and let me back up and, 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 and go to the first sign. In Genesis chapter 3, 315, when God was giving the judgment to Adam and Eve and the serpent, he mentioned that there would be a seed born of a woman, okay? And that seed is none other than his son. So we read in chapter 7 of Isaiah, listen to the scriptures, and, and, it, and it's just so plain that um, Isaiah has given us different pictures throughout the Old Testament of the Messiah coming. Okay? And so uh, Ezekiel 7, 14 says this, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Back in the Old Testament, the Old Testament they look for signs. We're not looking for signs today. The scripture says the just shall live by faith. We're looking for the second coming of Christ 
they did look for different signs that the prophets would give concerning prophecy and the future. And if they come to pass, they knew that they were the true prophet of God. So he says, a sign I shall give unto you. Behold, a virgin, wow, a virgin, shall conceive, that is a child. And that child is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And bear a son, so a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Now last week, if you got a chance to listen to the Bible definitions, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 and 23 right there, Emmanuel is God with us. So definitely is talking about Christ Jesus. Now we turn over to chapter 9 of Isaiah, and we're going to look at two verses here, verses 6 and 7. Okay, it's chapter 9. And verse 6 and 7, listen to what the scripture says here, referring to the Savior being born, okay? Christ Jesus himself. The scripture says in verse 6, For unto us a child is born. That's the Virgin Mary will conceive a child, Emmanuel, God with us, okay? So a child is born. Now notice this right here. Unto us a son is given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Here it is right here. A child is born and a son is given. John 3.16. For God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. Okay, it goes on to say a son is given. And the government. See, when he offered the Jews the kingdom, that's what he was coming to do to set up his kingdom to rule after David, the throne of David, forever and ever. We're going to see something about that. But of course, that didn't come to pass because they rejected the Messiah. And it says, and his government shall be upon his shoulder. And that's not, that's not yet. He is king of kings now in the present tense. It's just that the kingdoms has not been defeated from the evil one as of yet because God's got a plan. We're going to turn over to Revelation 11, 15 to see this, so keep that in mind. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, now and future, Counselor, the Mighty God, which he is, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. There's not going to be any peace until the Prince of Peace comes and sets up his kingdom on this earth. Oh, there's been a little peace, a little peace here and there in different nations and different, but not very much peace. There's always been wars, and it's increasing, of course. And it's going to increase until Christ comes and sets up his kingdom, and they will be peace at that time, the Prince of Peace. He will set up his kingdom for 1,000 years, the rod of iron, he will roll, rule with the rod of iron, and then he will continue afterwards, and that will be. Now, it goes on to say the increase of his government and the peace shall be, there be no end upon, his, upon the throne of David and upon his throne to order it and to establish it. So that's coming to pass. So we see that the Old Testament knew the Messiah was coming, oh, there's many of them that we could look at. For time's sake, we won't look at any more. We've looked at the main ones. Now, let's go a little bit about the characters of the Christmas story. Of course, Mary. Mary was the virgin. The Gabriel angel, the angel Gabriel, came to her and said that the Holy Spirit will overshadow thee and she asked that question. She said, how can it be me not knowing a, a man, not ever known a man? And the Holy Spirit, Luke chapter 1 verse 35 tells us clearly that the Holy Spirit of God shall overshadow thee to conceive in thy womb the holy child Jesus. Okay? So that's made clear. And she said unto the angel, as the Lord will, that is, that is, whatever the Lord says, I believe and 
and I accepted. And she was, of course, the mother of the Savior. And, of course, Joseph. Now, Joseph was not Jesus' earthly father. That is real father. He was his stepfather, what we would say, the stepfather, okay? Joseph was a carpenter. No doubt showed Jesus, and Jesus uh, became a carpenter also. But let me say something before we go on to the shepherds about the three wise men. Now, we think about the three wise men. Actually, there was three gifts given, so we think about the three. There was three wise men. Um, that's probably not near as many wise men that came. If three wise men or three men would have come to Herod and said, we're here to worship the king, he would have thought, well, just three people that's got a notion or something. They've got some kind of dream. But no, there was many. I believe we believe there's many more than three. But for the pageants and the Christmas stories, we make it simple. Three uh, gold, frankincense, and mire. We look at the three wise men. But there was much more than that that came and said, we have come to worship the king of the Jews, for we have seen his star. Okay, so that's a little bit about the wise men coming. But let's look at the gifts that they gave. They gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The gold represents Christ's deity. He is king of kings and lord of lords. He is now in the sense that he has the power or he will have the power of everything. He has the power. We, he will have all the kingdoms, future, and it's coming, just as sure as anything else is coming to pass that God says. So the gold, of course, physically, that is, monetarily, it helped the family. Okay? Apparently, soon after, Joseph comes off the scene. Apparently, he may have died. We're not sure about that. But the gold represents his deity. Frankincense represents the the deity. I'm sorry, the, the, the gold represents his kingship. Okay? The incense represents his deity. He is deity. It also had to do with worship. There was different kinds of incense that would they would put on the altar and in the uh, to burn to to go up to God and God would smell the 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 uh, incense. So it has to do with deity. And then mire. What is mire? It was anointing oil for the death of someone. They knew that Christ, they believed the scriptures, they understand that Christ was going to pay the debt on the cross of Calvary. And they represented, the mire represents his death, the frankincense his deity, the gold his kingship. King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's go to the shepherds. The shepherds is out there. It's pitch dark. And the light comes and an angel pronounces the birth of Christ. And they said, they said, go into the place there in the inn and you will see the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. And the scripture says, as the angel pronounced to leave us, uh, the angels was praising God and glorifying God and saying, the highest, God of the highest, the Messiah was born. And that brings me to Luke 2.11, where it says simply this right here, and I've memorized this verse, but this verse is so wonderful. If you've never memorized this verse, this is a great verse, for unto you is born. Now he's speaking to the shepherds here, but he's speaking to everyone in the whole world. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, 11. Okay? And so we see the shepherds went there and they saw the Messiah, Christ, baby Jesus. They saw Mary. They saw the um, Joseph. And no doubt all the animals around. And I'll say a word about the innkeeper. Maybe he's the one that cleaned out the trough for the manger, put some hay in there, fresh hay, made it as best as he could for Mary that was espoused with Jesus, the Messiah. We see the innkeeper. Then we see those that said we have no room for him. 
no room in the inn. Apparently they were traveling light, uh, slower, much slower because of her pregnancy is probably why they got there late and there was no place for them in the end. Then we see they, uh, Christ, of course, is the center of the whole thing. Uh, Christ is the birth. Jesus, God robed in flesh. Okay, John 1.14 tells us that. And so what a, what, a, what a wonderful thing. Bethlehem was the place. By the way, Micah 5.2 announces where Christ would be born. Now, they lived in Nazareth, but there was the decree. A command went out from Caesar that all must be taxed in their, in their home city. And Bethlehem was their home city. That's why they were there. By the way, Caesar and Herod and all of those other ones, uh, Serenius, they wouldn't worry about a pregnant woman. They, they wanted those taxes, but God used that to get them to Bethlehem. And she was great with child, as, you'll, as we'll read. And so we see Nazareth was the place to come from, to Be or, uh, Bethlehem. And then you just, uh, there's a few other de details. But we're going to turn over. Oh, I did want to read one verse about the kingship of Christ one day. In Revelation chapter 11, and verse 15, listen to what it says. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms, that is of this world today, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Not, as only, not only is he king of kings and lord of lords, the savior of the world, he's going to rule, rule and reign forever and ever. This is God's world. He's going to take it back from the devil. There's a lot between now and then. But if you don't know Christ as your Savior, you don't know him in here, it's time to receive your Savior, to save your soul from a place called hell, to save you from your sins. That's why I come. Luke 19.10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. We're lost until we invite Christ in trusting what he did, his death, his burial, his resurrection from the dead, believing that God paid our debt, and we simply believe it by faith, and not only believe it, we partake, we accept it, we own it. He's our Savior, and we accept. And those that believe, they're saved from sin, no longer, no longer in sin, the penalty, but in heaven above, waiting for them. Let's read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20, and uh, we'll close with, with the, the reading of the story of Jesus. Listen to the story as we go through here. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this tax was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria, uh, Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone in his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Galilee, not Galilee, um, Judea, I'm sorry, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And it came to pass that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her first son, firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, for there was no room for them in the end. Got a question. Do you have room in your heart for Christ to be your Savior? Think about that for just a moment. There was no room for Him in the, in the end. Do you have room for Christ to be your Savior and your Lord? Let's move on and read. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shunned around about them, and they were sore afraid. I believe I would have been too. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And here's that verse 11 again. For unto us, to you, unto us, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen and amen. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go, even to Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at these things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. And it was told unto them. That's the story of our Savior, just one part of the story. Matthew gives the other details. But what a lovely Savior we have. What a Savior that God would send His Son. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Merry Christmas to you. And I hope Jesus Christ is your Savior. If He's not, call upon Him and say, God, you did send your Son Jesus for me. And I have room for Him in my life, my heart. I let Him. He's already Lord, but I let Him be the Lord of my life and accept Him by faith, and He'll save your soul. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you and give you a little bit of Christmas uh, song as we as we finish. Thank you again for being here.